the sailor, the rigger, the sailmaker, the sack maker all use very much the same kind of tools. Some are specific to one particular trade, but there are many tools that are generic right the way across these four separate as such trades. So we have pricker, marlin spike, and marlin spikes come in different shapes and forms. Fids, fids, a tapered cone of wood. These tools are used for splicing rope. Splicing rope is making a permanent join in the end of, or join or loop in a piece of rope. You open the, the, the rope up with the fid and then you put the rope through. And you can see that if you're careful with the tool, it's going to be quite smooth, but if you kind of bash it about at all, and a fid really is a stretching tool. It's not a levering tool. Here I'm making an eye splice, a permanent loop, make a couple of tucks. I could use a marlin spike if it was a smaller piece of material, or if it was wire, I would certainly be using a marlin spike. That's just completed an eye splice with three full tucks, all that's needed in a bit of natural rope like that. That will hold and that's a permanent fixing using the fid to, to open up the, the layer of the rope. Some rope is a bit tighter than others and that's where the fid gets used. One of the tasks that a fid is used for, but uh, it's a stretching tool rather than a lever. The marlin spike acts more of a lever, that's because it's made of metal, and some people will prefer a pricker because it's got a wooden handle and it's a little more comfortable to hold. So there we have those three tools, the fid, the marlin spike, and the pricker. Now the marlin spikes do come in a whole range of sizes and shapes, but all metal, always a marlin spike is always all metal. The fid is always all word, and the pricker, the combination of the two. People sometimes say, why is it a marlin spike? Well, as I say, it's an all metal tool, and it, it's partly named after the material that it works with at certain times of its life, as it were. Marlin, a small tarred twine. So I'm going to make a seizing here using marlin, or marline, and then I'm going to use the marlin spike to just help me work this material. I'll just put it down for a moment while I'm pulling it tight. A flat seizing, joining, making a loop, but in a different manner to the manner of, the, of making it with a, a splice. Now, one of the ways that a marlin spike would be used would be using a marlin spike hitch. That gives you a good pull tight. So it's stretching a little bit like the fid, but of course the fid is all wood and it won't get, it's not quite so fine on the end. Just made there a seizing using the marlin spike has helped me in the final work. There. There's my seizing finished off and I'll just trim the end off. And so then we have a seizing, seizing one end and I splice the other end, and we'll then do a little bit of worming, parceling, and serving. The rigging on board ship um, is very vulnerable to a number of factors. 
water, will cause natural materials to rot, will cause wire rope to rust. So the sailor does all that he can, the rigger does all that he can, and the sailmaker does all that he can to protect the cordage, be it wire rope or natural fibre rope. The way that he does this is to fill the grooves of the rope with small line, which is called worming. Filling in each groove of the rope to make it smooth. Worming with the lay, the twist of the rope. Worm and parcel with the lay, turn and serve the other way. They would do this very long distances over the standing rigging of a ship um, and on the vulnerable parts of, of the rope on the sail. Then we parcel, wrapping with a piece of canvas, shirt, hessian, sacking, burlap, call it what you will whatever's the hand, old sail, any of those materials would be used. The covering of the, the rope or rigging would need to be dressed over a period of time with tar. That's why they call the, the sailor uh, an old tar, is because he will be very smelly with Stockholm tar. The next stage on is to serve. So we've wormed, we've parceled, and now we will serve. Serving mallet has a groove in it, which fits on the rope in that way. Serving board, again, the same kind of thing. There are very many combinations. There's another serving board, a little hand carved one, fits round the rope. They come in all sorts of different sizes. This is a bigger one for a much larger piece of rope has a piece of metal to reinforce it. Sometimes you find them all metal. Sometimes you can even go to a great big beasts like this for very large cables. The mallet is a tool for friction. It's a balance of keeping the, the tension enough, the friction enough, to not quite break the marlin. The serving mallet here, shaped with its groove to go over the rope in exactly the same, to fit the rope. works exactly the same way if it was a serving board. Flat, this time on the side of the rope rather than on the top of the rope. And that would work in much the same sort of way. Who uses a serving board? Who uses a serving mallet is an interesting discussion. It very much as to where you start your life. If you learn with a serving mallet, then you're comfortable with a serving mallet all through your life. If you start with a serving board, that is what you prefer. I think that a serving board is more likely to be a merchant navy tool than a Royal Navy tool, or shall we put it another way, from that culture, because often people will come from sea and come ashore and work perhaps in a rigging loft or a, or a sailmaker's and if they've, they'd started their lives in the Royal Navy they would bring with them the habit of a lifetime of using a serving mallet. Um, the mallet needs a different kind of um, manufacturer. Very often the serving boards could be handmade. This one I'm using here is just being carved and shaped by the, by the, the, the user and uh, yet the mallets are almost always factory made. Rather than carrying the ball round every time, some sailors 
and riggers modify their serving mallets by putting some kind of reel or holder on them. That way they can get a lot of line and they can work it. These tools are not so frequently found with the modification but they do occur and it is done so you don't need a boy to pass the line and you don't have to worry about your, your skein of, of, of marlin coming undone or anything like that. You can work with it much quicker than having to worry about the little bundle of yarn being passed over. Very, very often modified sailor made items. There were over the years a number of uh, patent mallets made, um, but they were sometimes all metal, sometimes wood and metal, um, but never made in very large productions. Uh, because of course in the past there were plenty of men around so you could always have a boy to pass or a man on boy to pass the line. Look how much better that's gone where I haven't had to worry about the passing of the, the, the skein of, of, of marlin. So we have the worming, the parceling and the serving.